Hi guys, welcome to another Road Pilgrim car review and today we are going to review the all new Peugeot 408 which is Peugeot's latest fastback vehicle that you see right here behind me. Uh, for today's review, we are going to take a look at its exterior because we all know that Peugeots are all a little bit aesthetically um, on a different level to the regular cars. Uh, we're going to jump inside and check out its uh, rather beautiful interior and of course we're going to go take it for a drive because there is something quite special about the drive setup of the Peugeot 408. But before we get on with today's review, if you are thinking about selling your used car in Singapore, be sure to check out the link in the description box below because through that link, we'll be able to provide you with the highest possible code and valuation for your used car. And uh, we can also consign your car on the open market for a better price. It's completely free to inquire. There are no transaction fees, no hidden fees. So be sure to check out the link if you are interested in selling your used car. And with that, let's get on with the review. All right, so this is the exterior of the Peugeot 408. And, uh, this is presented in a very nice, unique uh, sea green sort of colour um, and this car that you see in front of you is actually the GT trim level. There is actually a more conventional lower spec trim level called the Allure and throughout this review, we'll share with you some of the differences that you will see. Uh, one of the key things that you get on the GT trim level is actually on the front so this grille that you see is actually in the same body colour as the rest of the car whereas on the Allure trim level, what you get is a standard chrome trim. Uh, along the sides, you also get larger wheels and uh, these are 20 inch wheels and these are the um, asymmetrical design uh, sports wheels. And um, what you see here is also a all new redesigned Peugeot badge. This is the, um, new corporate identity where you get the uh, two-dimensional Peugeot logo and on the Allure trim level you don't get the logo over here uh, only on the GT trim level and actually on the front as well you can see the new presenter logo um, this is the new, the new style so to speak which I think is very cool I think a lot of brands today are actually moving towards this uh, simplified two-dimensional logos which I think is very keeping with the times so moving to the side, this is the side profile of the car and of course you can, and I think straight away you can see that this is a rather large car. I mean it's not humongous but it is very family sized and actually based on current COE prices in Singapore, this Peugeot 408 will come in at around $200,000 and of course by the time you watch this review, those prices might have changed but as of now, at the time of shooting this review, this car will cost about 200 ish $210,000 which actually puts it in a very similar price bracket as other more conventional options like for example a, a Mazda 6 or perhaps a Corolla Cross Hybrid and uh, even say a Subaru Forester um, Of course, there are also many other cars in that same segment but I've chosen these cars because they are sort of of the same um, they serve the same family vehicle purpose. Um, towards the back of the car, you will see that this is a fast back and I'll open the boot lid for you to take a look as well. So this is an automatic tailgate and as you can see because it's a fast back, your loading aperture is actually really really good. So that makes it a little bit more practical than the conventional sedan and uh, also because it doesn't uh, lift outwards like in a standard SUV, you will also find this a little bit more practical um, in tighter spaces or in tighter car parks. There is a little bit of a loading lip here but nothing too crazy and uh, you've also got a spare tyre underneath. Go. Spare tire. Generally speaking, very practical space in the in the boot, and a very family ready. Let's see. There we go. Automatic tailgate down. So, generally speaking, I think this is a very nicely styled car, and if you compare it to the options that are all or the alternatives that I mentioned earlier, I think it's very clear to see that the four hundred eight does have a little bit more going on in terms of its styling 
and I think for those people who are interested or a little bit more particular about the aesthetics of their vehicle, then the 408 becomes a very good good option to consider because um, the Corolla Cross, the Mazda 6, and the Forester are all quite conventionally styled. Um, and put it in a and to put it in another way, they're not going to be turning any heads in the public car park. Whereas the 408, it does visually stand out and look like something a little bit more special. So with that, let's jump into the car and check out its interior. Alright, so I am now in the driver's seat of the 408 and I, as you can see, look, coming in was actually really easy because uh, this car does come with comfort and access. So in its, um, when it's shut off, the seat actually pulls back so that it's easier for you to load or to come in and out of, out of the car. And then when you start the engine, it actually moves your seat forward. So, let's wait for the camera to be done. Right, so, so jumping straight into the design of the cabin, I think you can easily see that this is a very uniquely styled cabin. Um, it's not something that you're going to see across, uh, across a wide range of cars. And uh, even within the Peugeot range as well, you know, they, they didn't just um, take a modular platform and fit a very similarly looking um, interior onto all of its cars. If you compare this to the 208, it actually looks quite a lot different. And uh, let's go through some of the differences actually. So to start off right across the dashboard, uh, you've got a nice stitch pattern here and this is of, of course available on the GT line. The GT lines come with this green stitching which I think is very cool. I think it looks very modern uh, and the fact that it has this stitch element does lend it to feel like you know a little bit more premium than the rest of its competitors in the same segment. Further down the dash you've got this uh, matte chrome trim which sort of highlights the aircon line and your aircon are actually your aircon vents are actually situated right up here which I am actually a huge fan of and I think it cannot be like I think it's often an understated point because with recent vehicle designs where they like to put the infotainment unit front and center right at the top they've actually shoved the aircon vents further down uh, it's very common to see nowadays and actually that really kind of hits your arm before it hits you and that's really not very comfortable so I'm actually a huge fan of the fact that the aircon vents are in its conventional spot um, further down, of course, you've got this infotainment unit touchscreen and it's very nice in a... It has this very nice piano black finish. And what's really cool about this infotainment unit is actually its customizability. Now, um, you can actually control and customize almost how, like, completely how you want to arrange the widgets within the infotainment system. And... Um, really kind of set it to your preference and of course within the system as well there are multiple vehicle profiles so you can set different profiles for you and say your wife um, or you and other members of your family so every time you get into the car and you select the correct driver profile you can actually get your set of customized widgets um, and it doesn't just end with the infotainment unit Further down the infotainment unit, there's actually this panel here. Uh, it's called eye toggles, if I'm not wrong. And uh, basically, it gives you a set of uh, five shortcuts, including your home button. And these five shortcuts are actually completely customizable as well. So, any or almost any item that's clickable within the infotainment unit, you can actually bring it down into your shortcuts. Uh, into your eye toggle panel so that you have quicker access to it so one of the things that i particularly like about this is that you can bring things like your auto start stop button into the eye toggles panel which means that you have very quick access to something like a start stop function um, of course you've got your safety settings here as well climate control media application draw this is just what uh, Peugeot has set up for me when i when i collected the car this morning um, but I personally, I'm not the sort of person that will really go all out to customize my screen. But I I know that there are people, especially like Android users, who are who are very fond of customizing their phone widgets. I think you will feel very very happy with a system like that because 
it kind of like satisfies this inner OCD that you have. Um, and I think uh, that's actually quite pleasant for some people. Uh, further down, you have some physical buttons that have to do with your climate control. Um, Peugeot says that these still con still count as piano keys, you know, the signature Peugeot piano keys, but they aren't quite as pronounced as the ones that you find on 208, which I think are a little bit more aesthetically pleasant. These are more modern in a way, but maybe not so pretty. Um, but anyway, these are not critical, critical features, so we are just going to leave it at that. Further down the center console, you've got wireless charging pad, you've got USB sockets, two decent sized cup holders with a retractable cover, and you've also got this um, random storage space that I've used to keep the car key. Uh, of course, you can insert anything else you want. There is kind of like built as an incline, so you could put a phone there. I think that would actually work quite well as well. In the middle, you've got a dual, dual panel opening um, uh, center bin that's actually quite a good size. You can put quite a lot of things in there. I could actually make my entire um, tumbler disappear inside the center console, which is pretty cool. And you've got another USB port there as well. Um, along this side, you've got your drive selector, your drive mode selector, and of course your start stop button and your parking brake. Now, coming to the driver's side, this is I think where all the magic happens. <coughs> and actually, I tried, I like, I tried um, filming the holographic screen earlier, the info, the the, the driver's instrument cluster, uh, which actually has this very cool holographic display. But it doesn't really show up on camera anyway, so um, I'm not really able to show that to you on camera because even when I was holding the, the camera and uh, um, panning in directly onto the holographic screen, it just doesn't seem to appear the same way that it, that it appears to the human eye. So you're just going to have to take my word for it that this is one of the coolest digital driver's displays on the market, hands down, because it looks so cool and it just has this element of something special when you look at it. it. It does bring a little bit of a smile to your face or even if you're not like an extroverted or like overly happy person, I'm sure it will make you smile a little bit inside. Um, further down, right here, is probably what I think is my favourite feature of the 408 which is this um, octagonal no, okay. Six, six sides, yeah. So it's um it's not a round steering wheel. It's a very nice compact steering wheel, and I think it feels very very nice to operate. Um, first of all, it's it's very sporty because it generally sporty wheels are smaller. Um, but later on when I'm driving the car, I'll also show you what I mean. Uh, it's actually very easy to operate as well. Uh, but aesthetically, I think this is absolutely beautiful. It has the GT trim board here, um, and the whole car just looks like something from the future uh, which I think I'm quite fond of. So no complaints about the styling in the 408. Um, build quality is also very decent. There's got, you've, you've got a nice amount of soft touch materials around. Um, you've even got this um, display that actually shows you the uh, seat belt status of your passengers and this is very reminiscent of the W124 Mercedes where they had the uh, seatbelt sign up here. Um, I think that's also very, um, like, this is a very, you know, it is a cheap thrill, uh, novelty feature, but, but still very nice. Um, one tiny, tiny, tiny issue with this design though, is that because the upper half of this wheel is also very small, because it's the whole, the whole wheel is actually a lot smaller than, than a regular steering wheel, you do find it a little bit difficult to set a very standard driving position where I think most people are very used to putting their steering wheels at a height where you can see through the hole here into your um, driver's display but with the Peugeot 408 you kind of have to set the wheel below the driver's display because you're not going to be able to see the display through here so there is a bit of adjustment going on that you need to, to get used to um, or you might have to forego some non-critical information on the driver's display that you maybe can't see in your preferred driving position. But I leave that up to you. It's not a big, it's not a deal breaker in any way. Um, but I think with anything that is aesthetically driven, um, there are some things you have to forego. <laughs> so unfortunately, um, that is the case here as well. Alright, so um, with that, 
I'm very happy in the front seat. I'm going to jump into the back seat and check out how the rear passenger leg room is in the 408. Alright, so this is the rear section of the cabin and when I was climbing into the car, what I realised was that although this is sort of a fast back sedan, it is kind of raised a little bit. So it does have a tiny bit of crossover feels um, and that's actually kind of a good thing if you think about it because loading or your entry height is actually a little bit easier than in a regular sedan. Just, just by a little smidge, but it does make a tiny bit of difference. However, because it is a fast bag, I did kind of bump my head on the top here a little bit. But that's probably my own fault because um, I should know better. I test cars every single week, so I should know that a fast bag will require me to duck my head a little bit more. But in any case, um, now that I'm seated comfortably in the rear, and this driver's seat is in my regular driving position. I'm 175 meters tall. This is the amount of legroom that I have in the back of the car, which is actually really, really cool because the car is actually sort of a... I feel like it's kind of bigger than some of the competitors that I mentioned earlier. So if you compare it to something like, say, a Corolla Cross Hybrid, it's, this is definitely more legroom. Um, and that makes it a little bit more comfortable as well. And uh, it's probably a little bit smaller than a Mazda 6 in a, in a way. And um, probably quite similar to a Forester, I would say. But then again, all this is very subjective. Um, in terms of headroom, there is still enough headroom for me, even though I'm seated in quite an upright position. And this is despite it being a fastback. So obviously, um, despite its fastback design, it doesn't, it has not really compromised headroom all that much. And also keep in mind that on this GT version, this has a sunroof. So I guess it does eat into the headspace a little bit. If you get this car in the Allure version without the sunroof, headroom might even be a little bit better. Um, but of course, if I were to just sort of take a more regular seating position, a more slouching position, um, then actually my headroom becomes quite comfortable and uh, I do have enough space to put my feet underneath the front seat as well. So perfectly comfortable here. There are, there are um, rear aircon vents, although these rear aircon vents look like they were styled by someone completely different because they're not not very pretty at all. Um, I wish that they had installed some nicer looking aircon vents at the rear. Uh, they are quite small as well but I think um, better a small aircon vent in the rear than no aircon vent. Uh, these do have a uh, control of their own in terms of the, um, uh, the, the wind flow but they do not have a fan speed control and a uh, temperature control which of course will then follow the settings that you have on the front. There are two more USBs um, uh, ports at the back so people at the rear can happily charge their phones and play with their phones to no end but generally speaking this is a very comfortable size for a family car and uh, you've also got US uh, no, not USB ISO fixed points in the rear seats here so it is quite family ready um, they are accessible through this rather strange zip mechanism though which um, I'm not going to say that it's a bad Thing, but they do feel like if you yank on it too often, they might break. So uh, I would have preferred a regular uh, plastic catch, perhaps. Um, but anyway, those are not critical, critical aspects of the car. As you can see, I keep bumping my head on top, uh, and that's because of a tiny, tiny hump here. But uh, um, uh, if you are extremely particular about headspace, I think. Uh, a standard SUV might probably work a little bit better for you but personally I feel like I would much rather drive a, um, a sedan fastback uh, just because I think on the roads they are a lot more comfortable on long distances and uh, they are a lot more uh, comfortable at higher speeds as well which talking about that let's go let, let's jump back into the driver's seat and uh, take the car for a drive and see how it does Okay, so now up on the roads in the Peugeot 408 and to get some specifications out of the way, 
This car runs a 1.2 litre three cylinder turbocharged engine and this is mated to a 8 speed automatic. And this setup is actually good for 129 horsepower, 230 newton meters of torque. And then Peugeot says that that will bring the 408 from 0 to 100 in about 12 ish seconds, which on paper actually sounds really slow. But it is also important to note that I think with modern cars today, a lot of the car setups are geared towards lower end torque and city driving, which means that when you actually do get on the gas pedal in the 408, the car actually feels faster than its 12 seconds 0 to 100 time. And I think if you consider, maybe if you gauge it from a 0 to 60 km per hour standpoint, the 408 should do decently well. And while it's not by any means a rapid car, not a very quick car, um, it definitely doesn't feel sluggish either and driving around town does feel quite comfortable. There is quite a lot of punch at the low end from the turbocharged three-cylinder. Now being a three-cylinder engine, obviously it's not the most refined engine and you do still feel a little bit of clattering. But the insulation in the car is generally quite good as well. So I, to be honest, I'm not really very bothered by the clattering. And I think it's also not, um, it's not different or it's not better or worse than what you find in the rest of the market in terms of three-cylinder engines today. So I think that's all well and good. Um, but while we are on the topic of the 408's drivetrain, I think that is where the key selling point of the 408 is because what it offers you as a consumer is actually a family-sized car that is, like I said, you know, on par with some larger options like a Mazda 6. But unlike a Mazda 6 that carries a large 2.5-litre litre engine, this runs a 1.2-litre turbocharged engine and sits within category A, which means that it is quite um, a lot more economical, so to speak, in terms of road tax, um, in terms of its COE. I think it's a lot more manageable in today's context because COE prices now, the difference between Cat A and Cat B at the current moment is about 30000 So if you consider that, you're actually um, paying quite a lot more for a Cat B car. So the fact that this 408 offers you Cat B sizing, but with a Cat A drivetrain, is actually, I think, quite a strong value proposition and something that I quite like very much. Uh, while we are still on the topic of the car being used as a family car, uh, ride quality in the 408 is generally quite good. Uh, it goes over the imperfections quite nicely despite riding on 20 inch tyres. I, I, I think initially when I was driving around in this car, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, ride quality is okay. And then I remembered that it rides on 20 inch tyres, and then that was rather impressive because. This is not the kind of tyre size that you typically associate with right comfort. If you really step on the gas, you find the gear changes to be quite quick as well. At the point of shifting, it doesn't, it, it doesn't drag out or it's not sloppy. It's actually quite crisp in the way it shifts up gear. And I think that's very important for a car like that because uh, with a small engine, you are typically going to want to get the car up to speed as fast as possible. You don't want to leave it dragging around for too long. And it's very nice that the gear shifts are nice and crispy. So, and I think more importantly as well, you know, it kind of having a transmission that is dynamic, quick shifting, and um, for lack of a better word, uh, a little bit more agile, it does allow you to feel that the car is a little bit more on task, you know, it's not just it's not just mucking about on your day-to-day -day drive. So I think that's all really pleasant and I think it was this, this is also this constitutes some form of driver dynamics. And speaking about driving dynamics, if you were to decide to chuck the 408 into a corner, I must say the steering is actually quite sharp as well. And like if you listen to the transmission again. The moment of upshift is actually pretty crispy. Very nice. 
Um, yeah, handling is also pretty decent and in corners, the suspension setup of the 408 is built in a conventionally continental way. And what do I mean by that? Um, so in most, I think in most Japanese setups, uh, comfort is derived from softness. Uh, but in a continental setup, comfort is actually derived from firmness. And that firmness, I think in the 408 has really done two things. And one is of course to provide it a, a, a authentic continental feel, so to speak. But it also allows the car to sit a little bit more flat in corners and give the driver a little bit more assurance. So I think, generally speaking, I think um, handling of the car is decent. Ride quality of the car is pretty good for a 20-inch tyre. Uh, insulation is pretty good. Uh, and obviously, the only downside is its power. But like I said, the upsides of having a Cat B size car with a Cat A drivetrain probably far outweighs the fact that you have you know, less power than you would normally have in a car of this size. Um, if there are any questions that you have, about the 408 that I have not covered or I have missed out, please let me know in the comment section below. I will be more than happy to address those questions. And if you have enjoyed this video or if you have found it useful, I would strongly urge you or encourage you to give this video a like, you know, consider giving this a like and subscribing to the channel because we've got more car reviews coming out every single week. So it would be awesome if you could join us for those reviews. Earlier on in this review, we did mention that the 408 um, sits in a similar price bracket as a Corolla Cross Hybrid. And if you want to see my review of that particular car, you can also click up here. We've already done the review for that car, so you can actually compare the two reviews and see what you think. Uh, before we go, just a quick reminder, if you are thinking about selling your car in Singapore, be sure to check out the link in the description below because through that link, we'll be able to provide you the best possible code and valuation for your car or help you to consign it on the open market for a better price and it is completely free to inquire. There are no transaction fees, no hidden fees, so be sure to check it out. If not, as usual, please stay safe, take care of yourself and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.